Okay, it's number 11 here, it's second to last page in this white radical review packet. Uh, they want you to take the cube root of 320, which by the way is negative, and they want you to subtract four cube roots of five, it's a weird problem, plus two cube roots of 135, plus two cube root 16. So first of all, easy question, are 320, five, 135, and 16 the same number? No, that's a very easy question. So, are you allowed to just go ahead and combine all these? No. It would be like trying to add 3a plus 2b plus 9x plus 4z. You can't because they're different variables. You can't because they're different radicals. You can't just add them or subtract them. That's part one to understand. So, our next step is... Can we kind of morph them or change them so they do look similar? So maybe we can add them or subtract them together. And that's where we come in with this whole simplifying concept. All right? I'm going to start with the easiest one first. Four times the cube root of five is basically done. You can't do anything with that because five doesn't break down into any factors other than one in itself. Well, there's no point in doing that. It's not going to get you anywhere. All right? So I'm just going to circle this one so we realize we're kind of done. We can't do anything with it. Can you take the next biggest, 16, way over here at the end, and cube root it? Can you take the cube root of 16 nicely, evenly, get a whole number? I don't think so. The perfect cubes are one cubed, 2 cubed, 8, 3 cubed, 27, let's keep going a couple more, 4 cubed is 64, and 5 cubed is 125. You see, basically, this is a study of, do you remember, like, doing stuff and being good at your times tables when you were a kid, all right? You probably were, because you're here now. You're in the honors math class in the high school, and you probably had a pretty good foundation at some point, I hope. All right? Maybe it's been a while since you did stuff in your head because we introduced the calculator and you've relied on that for a couple years. Sorry, but sometimes it's good to just know stuff in your head in life. So uh, here we go. Can you cube root 16 nicely? No, because 16 isn't on this list. However, could you break it up so that one of its factors is on this list. Yes. 16 can break up into 8 times 2. So that's what we're going to do with it. All right? So we're going to break 16 up into the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. In red, sorry, in green, we'll actually cube root that. What is the cube root of 8? 2. Here's what happens with it. You cube root it and you get 2, but it comes out and multiplies by this 2. What's 2 times 2? 4. So this beast at the end here ends up being 4 times the cube root of the thing that you didn't cube root. 2. The 2 got stuck the 8 was cube rooted. So we're now done with the one that I circled in green. We transformed it into 2 times the cube root of 16. Next, so we have the thing that I circled in black. Can't go anywhere with it. We have the thing that I circled in green. We're done with that. Now we're going to work on the next biggest one, which is 2 times the cube root of 135. Okay? So here's what I would do when you have something that ends in 5. Break it up into 5 times something. 27? If you don't know how to do that, divide 135 by 5, either in your head or using your calculator, and you get 27. So my question is right now, is 5 or 27 on this list. Yes, 27 is a perfect cube. 
so you can cube root this while the cube root of 5 gets stuck. Okay? So here's what happens. Follow me. What is the cube root of 27? 3. That multiplies by the existing number out front to make 6 cube roots of 5. Okay. That was positive, right? This is positive. This is minus 4 cube roots of 5. So we have this one, the blue one, and the green one all listed. Now it's time to tackle that one out front, the 320. All right. First of all, we have some options here. If something ends in a 0, it's probably divisible by blank. 10 or 5 or 2, right? Because it's even, so it's divisible by 2. It ends in a 0, so it's divisible by 5 or 10. Which of those would you like to break it up by? You want to go with 10? Okay. Let's break 320 up into 32 times 10. Is either of those numbers on this list? No. 5 and 64. 5 and 64. Is either of those numbers on this list? 64. 64 is a perfect cube. So, listen, you also could have done 2 times 160, right? And if you got stuck, you could then break the 160 down and keep chipping away at it to try to see if you find a perfect cube. So, we're there, though. We have it broken down into 5 times 64. And I can cube root this. I can't cube root that. So here's what we do. We take the cube root of 64. It's 4. You bring it out front, and normally you would multiply it by the number out here, but there's just a negative sign out here. So you make the 4 negative. And the cube root of 5 is stuck. So do we have any sort of like terms right now? You've got a cube root of 5, you've got a cube root of 5, you've got a cube root of 5, and a cube root of 2. One of these things is not like the other. Which one? The cube root of 2 is just going to kind of be stuck. 4 cube root of 2 is going to be there. Out here we have 6 cube roots of 5. Minus 4, minus 4 more. So think about that. If you have 6 of something and you lose 4, think about where you are, 2, and then you lose 4 more. So you're at negative 2, cube root 5. The 4 cube root 2 is positive, and you're done. That simplifies to negative 2 cube root 5 plus 4 cube root of 2. That's about as far as you can go. You're done.